What's going on guys? Coach Matt and YouGoProBaseball.com. I'm here with Brent Porcio, Top Velocity. And we're talking about today, uh, you were known as having a pitching program with the most 90 mile an hour testimonials ever well, that I've seen. I, I say that, John, and I think maybe I'm being a little too confident, but I don't know. I haven't seen as many. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. But yeah, I'll, <laughs> I'll take that. <laughs> well, uh, if you guys can't see it now, but I'll show you a clip. But there's a bunch of uh, posters up here. And what I want to know is your best result that you ever got and why some of your guys are having so much success fill us in so all have great stories and i think that's the coolest thing about being a coach is like you get to really invest in a player and you get to learn his purpose and his story and I, it's, it's exciting man and if you go on my site you can watch the testimonials we interview them and they, they tell their stories but there's a lot of fun ones i think for me the ones that are exciting i never got to play major league baseball but i got to work with guys and trying to get back to major league baseball and some of them we got back and it was it was a really exciting experience but I think one of the best stories so far, uh, most recently, was Travis Owens. This uh, kid, you can, we'll fill you in on more of the intricacies of it, but he came from China and uh, wanted to pitch uh, college and professionally in America. And really hard worker, big guy too, he's about 6'2", 225, and was on my program for about a year before he finally got into camp. And he got into camp um, towards, I think it was a little over a year of him actually doing the training. And you could see he was already really matured in all the levels of training that we do. And he just needed some really key tips mechanically, uh, both in the lifting and in the throwing, to, to really get where he needed to go. And he comes into camp, he sits on this mound, he hits 86, which you know is decent for him, but he wants to play high-level college. He's in JUCO right now, and he wants to go play some professional baseball. And we're in the throwing drills, and he's – starting to make improvements and the key thing for him the thing that he was really struggling with is every time he would land he couldn't get this hip extended you know if we, we talk about triple extension that's a key part to, to driving power and and then also the other key part is hip to shoulder separation so he was landing and couldn't get the hip through a lot to do because the shoulders weren't separated and he was he would be in this posture when he would land leaning forward off balance and then you'd catch him pulling at the end as opposed to continuing to transfer all that power and that mass that he, he had a lot of in the front foot strike. So in all the drills, we just we couldn't get him there. And, and, but we'd put him on these knee drills, and he would explode up. Because in our knee drills, we don't just throw on our knee. We actually explode up from the knee to throw. And he was doing it so well that all of our coaches were like, you know, had the big eyes going, oh, my God, like you are incredibly explosive. They were like, same thing. We were all saying, once you learn to separate, man, it's going to be insane. Well, 13 days later, it was, it was cool because we had a guy here Thomas Casey, who has a, a faith-based academy out in Florida, in Tampa, they, uh, and, and Travis is from Tampa, they met in the camp, and then they decided to meet up and keep working together in Tampa, and they're at uh, Thomas's place, and they're just, he keeps texting me, and they're working on the same stuff, and they're sending me videos, and then all of a sudden, he just hits that moment, and this is 13 days later, where he starts to figure it out. And, he's, and he had never hit 90 before, and he, he's doing our separation throw on the mound, and he hit 91. The first time he ever hit 90-plus was in a separation throw on the mound. And then he, uh, he texted me, he said, I hit 91. I said, well, man, let's get it on the mound, and, uh, and then I'm, I'm going to throw you up as a testimonial. He goes, okay, I'm going to the mound right now. And then he gets on the mound, and he starts sitting 90 and sitting 90, and then he texts me literally like, he, he's like, this is the first time ever I'll probably have ever said this, but I'm sick of throwing 90 because he couldn't get over it. He felt like, you know, because he was 91 in the separation right. throw, he thought he'd be 93. So he just kept working on it, and, and you can see the video, and he did it, man. It was amazing. He hits 95, and the look on his face was like priceless. It's like, the, the, you know, you think anyone, the moment they hit 95, would have this look. It's that look of like, oh, my God, what did I just do, right? right. He puts his hand over his face because he sees 95. And when we go back and review the mechanics, he achieved everything that we were all saying here. If you could just separate, you're going to throw, it's going to be insane. And that's what he did. He hit front foot, hip was all the way through, and his shoulder was all the way back here. So in camp, he's laying in like this, and in that 95, he is literally sitting all the way back here like, you know, like a big leaguer. And it was, it was unbelievable because the 13-day transformation from here to nailing it is is really to be honest is unheard of like it's 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 just such a hard that's such a hard advancement to make and the fact that he did in 13 days is a testament to that kid's focus willpower and work through the program and it was just so exciting like i said the moment of just the kid like 
and th- this kid doesn't smile. And you see him like, huge smile, and he just puts his hand down, and he can't believe he just hit 95. And, you know, when he started at 74 a year ago. That's so awesome. There's so many guys out there who were probably sitting right around there, right around 74, and everyone wants to throw 95. You know, and, you know, obviously seeing all these testimonials, is this a possibility for anyone? Does, how yeah. much does gen- genetics come into play? How, how much, how much uh, ceiling would you give the average guy? You know, there's the, the, I think the key things involved are genetics. What is that? That's, that's DNA God gave you that is going to just, you know, as you wake up every day, it's going to manifest to this. That is important. Then you got this other thing of a program, a, a program that really understands the core principles of velocity and, and how it works. That's going to be important. And then, of course, the willpower, and, you know, that, and that's huge. I mean, that goes beyond uh, top velocity. That goes into, like, the spiritual world, right? It, there's so many important things there. So, yeah, if you can put those all together. And then this is how you bounce them out. If you come in and you don't have great the genetics to, to be a big leaguer, then, of course, the program is going to give you a little bit of that edge above. Then the willpower, more than likely, is going to help you overcompensate. So you just got to look at those three things. What do you have? Like, honestly, say to yourself, honestly, what are my genetics? Stop fooling yourself. A lot of people do that. Oh, I, I got the genetics to throw 95. Be honest. What do you really have the genetics to do? And then look at how good's my program? Am I just, you know, picking and cherry picking off the internet? Do I have a really legitimate program that I got a coach helping me through? Also, what's my willpower? Do I really love this game? Am I really passionate to wake up and, and not go on vacations? Maybe, you know, not uh, spend any time with my friends and, and, and sacrifice purely for what I'm trying to achieve. And once you understand your level and all that, that's going to really predict what the results are going to be. Self-awareness is key, really, in anything that you're doing. So you know where you're at and where you're trying to get to. And it's a lot easier to close the gap when you know that. Um, talking about uh, the third thing, the intangibles that this kid had, I think that also has a lot to do with you know maybe his parents or really just the environment that he was in coming up, probably. I, and I kind of want to tie that into environment. How is it here with the guys that come here versus someone who may never come here but get, got your program offline? Um, you know, are you seeing the same results? How, how does that work? Yeah, I mean, I would say obviously the guys here, there's two things going on. The, the guys coming here have more of an opportunity to get really better at this program, and we do see that. We do still have guys having success online. We also have guys, coaches outside of here that we certify that, that can help and do the coaching. Um, I, and also, too, you know, as much as I'm saying, if you look at a lot of my testimonies, they are guys that came here. There is a smaller amount that aren't, but I'm still, I'm not communicating with a lot of those guys. So maybe I have, and I know I have a lot more testimonials that I'm being told about. So I just, it just really comes down to if you have the intelligence, the willpower, and the time to do it by yourself, I think you're going to be great with it. But if you don't, I mean, that's a reason to maybe come here if you need the, the, the help, the support, uh, the, the motivation, because everybody in here is doing the same thing. And it also gives you an excuse to, to allocate that time to it. Then that that'd be a reason to come here, you know. Once we got some momentum, I think my first one was like 87. Wow. And from there, I hit 88 after another two throws, and then it went up to 91. And when I hit 91, that's when I just stopped, and I was like, man, I need to take a moment to think about what I'm doing right. First time I, I ever hit 90. I know it was your first time. The first time you ever hit 91 was in a drill. That's insane. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was pretty insane. I was like, man. I really need to like figure out how I'm gonna transfer it, transfer this to like a, to like a pitching delivery. And um, so we got into the mound. And I think the first one I threw was like 88 or 89. And I think I was just like, cause I took a little bit of a break, so I was just warming up again. And then the next one was 90. It was like the first time I hit 90 with a full pitching delivery. So I started getting a little pumped up. I think adrenaline kicked in a little bit and. I just kept throwing and throwing, and eventually I hit 92, and then that's when I was like, man, I can actually, like, try to get to 95 today. And so I hit 90, 90, and I think it's probably the most disappointed I've ever been about hitting 90. <laughs> yeah, Thomas said you are saying that 90 is getting annoying. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I hit 90, like, six or seven times, and then I was like, man, I need to, like, rethink my thought process. So I was like, I think in my head, like, instead of thinking 95, I'll start thinking 100, and, like, I hit 92 again, I think, and then on my next throw after that, I really sunk into my hips, and I felt a lot more torsion, and like, on that throw was when I hit 95, and that's when I just couldn't believe it. And- <laughs>